good peeps. Thanks always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. All right, let's do um, a full fight card prediction. I don't normally do these, but I want to um, give my predictions, which ain't normally that good, <laughs> for the uh, the full fight card. Um, by the way, yesterday I went to go and see Terminator, the new Terminator. I'm a big Terminator fan. Um, I think Terminator 1 and 2, I mean, both of those have to be they have to be in your top films of all time. Both of those were fucking excellent. Um, all the others have been crap. Let's be honest, they've been crap. This one I went to see yesterday. Um, don't get me wrong, nowhere near as good as number one or two, but not bad. And um, I went to go and see it in um, a 4DX screen. I don't know if you guys kind of know what that is, but it's fucking amazing experience. It's almost like being on a roller coaster. The chairs move, fucking water comes down. Not a lot of water, but water comes down. Um, steam hits you. It's like you're in the movies. That's what they think anyway. All right, let's um, look at this fight card that goes down O2 Arena um, tomorrow. The Wayans have all been wrapped up. Uh, the first fight on the night, rhymes, is Shannon Courtney versus Melinda Habrin. So Shannon Courtney versus Melinda Habrin. Shannon Courtney obviously unbeaten, three fights, three wins. What's she called? The baby-faced assassin or something. Um, how many people have that nickname? Uh, anyway, she's going to win. Um, I'm predicting, I don't know how many rounds it is, but I'm predicting points. Um, so she'll win. Um, up next after that is Austin Williams. He takes on Miroslav Juna. Austin Williams is that, um, I think is a middleweight that uh, Matram are very excited about from America. Very solid looking. Um, he's unbeaten in three fights. He's going to win. He'll probably get a first or second round stoppage. Uh, next on the card is Dennis Radovan um, against Luke Blackage. This would have been a good fight three or four years back, but Luke Blackage is now um, a journeyman, really, isn't he? Um, you look at his record, and I think he's lost something like four or five of his last eight or something. I'm just, I guess, something like that anyway. Um, Dennis Radovan is a prospect um with the Salons. obviously this is a mixed car so you're gonna have a couple of the Salon fighters on there um so he's probably gonna get a mid-round stoppage five or six abbas baru is up next against john o'donnell i didn't even know this fight was on the card this is an interesting fight um i was speaking to tom dallas tom dallas is the matchmaker for uh the Salons a few months back and he's very high on this kid very high um i think um he's Based in Germany, or he's, I think he's got German citizenship, but I think he's, um, his background is Ghanaian, I think. Um, but very, very good. They're thinking very good things about him. It's 154 pounds. This fight is for one of those WBC international titles. John O'Donnell, though, is on a bit of a run himself. Um, a lot more experience as well. So I don't think there'll be an upset. I think Abbas Barry will get the win, but I don't think it's going to be plain sailing. I think he's going to be asked a lot of questions, but in the end, I do think um, he'll get the job done. Conor Ben's up next in a welterweight fight against Steve Jamoye. Uh, I think Jamoye came in as a late replacement. I don't even know who was supposed to fight Conor Ben, um, but he's in an, as a late replacement um, experience, but Conor Ben will get the job done against him. I still don't know what the plan is of Conor Ben. Um, 15 fights in, we kind of should know what they're thinking about doing with him. Um, he's obviously got one of these WBA belts. I've made um, numerous videos talking about it, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. He's obviously got the name. Um, he can fight as well. It's not just the name. Conor Ben can fight. He can have a go. Um, I do think his ceiling um, isn't high. I don't think he's going to go to world level, just my opinion. Um but he's exciting. He's exciting. He's obviously been screaming for the Josh Kelly fight. Um, there's a big rumour going about Josh Kelly. I don't think I can say anything yet about it, but um, nothing to do with PDs, by the way, before anyone jumps on me. But there's a rumour about Josh Kelly because I think a lot of people have been asking what's going on with Josh Kelly. I might actually mention it on This Week in Boxing, um, for those of you that don't know. Um, two, if you like, the main card now. Um, Eves and Garbo defends his European title against Lawrence Okoli. Both of them unbeaten. Uh, Ngabu 20 and 0, Lawrence Okoli 13 and 0. Um, the weigh ins, I don't know how they weighed the same. Fucking Lawrence Okoli's massive. <laughs> He's massive for the weight. Um, I don't know about this fight. There's something about Lawrence Okoli where you think he's just going to get the job done. He's one of those guys that, in my head anyway, I think will win a world title. 
So I just expect him somehow to just to get the job done here. He, he might come up uh, with problems, but he seems to have an answer for all the problems he's come up against so far. Yes, it's not looked pretty and people have complained about him hugging and all that kind of stuff. Um, Shane Wigan has been brought in, I guess, to kind of improve that inside game. If he can improve the inside game, he's already got an outside game he can punch, right? Um, then um, it could be interesting in terms of what Lawrence Okoli does in the next sort of couple of years. But I expect him to get through Ngarbu and I expect him to become the European Cruiserweight champion. This fight, um, I think, has been completely forgotten and I think it's a good fight. I really do. Ricky Burns versus Lee Selby. It's a fight I thought I never would see, um, but it's happening. It's happening. I, I thought Lee Sel sorry, I thought Ricky Burns was done, and then he put on that really good performance. I know it's not great in terms of a named opponent, but Scotty Cardle. Um, I don't know when that fight was. I'm going to guess and say it was about six, seven months ago. He looked fantastic. He looked fantastic. So he's probably done at the very high world level, but in terms of British European level, I still think he's very, very good. Um, in saying that, I do like Lee Selby. I, I just wonder if two jumps up, like you jump in two weight classes here, could be an issue um, in terms of size. Ricky Burns has fought 140 pounds as well. So I'm going to go Ricky Burns here. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to go Ricky Burns to win this on points. On point. It's going to be a, a close fight, though, but a very good one. Uh, Co-main event, Derek Chisora will take on David Price. Derek Chisora looked very good on the scales. Very good. Looking better with age. Mm. Um, David Price, Chisora. Um, it's weird. I've, I've seen people's predictions, and everyone's just Derek Chisora immediately. Like, Derek Chisora is some world beater. He, he's not, and I'm a Chisora fan. I keep having to mention that, but I am. But um, I'm going to go... What's this for as well? This is for a vacant WBO Intercontinental Heavyweight title fight. What does that mean? Anyway, um, I'm going Chisora. Don't know. Don't know. I'm going Chisora mid, mid fight stoppage. So what's that? Six or seven. Um, but I've got this weird, weird feeling, which has nothing to do with form or ability or talent that David Price can clean his boots. Like literally just boom, knock him out, done. Like one punch, clean, that doesn't get up. So yeah, I don't know. <sighs> wouldn't be shocked, I'm not joking. It wouldn't shock me, I don't know about you guys, but it would not shock me if David Price knocks out Chisora. A late, Last minute replacement, no pressure on him, not much pressure on him. Um, everyone's picking Chisora. Um, don't know, wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah. And then the main event, the one I've gone back and forth with, the one where a lot of people have given me stick on my video for my prediction, Josh Taylor versus Regis Progress. For the WBA, IBF, and I don't know if you can win this, the WBC Diamond Belt. Um, Gone back and forth on this one a lot. Out of interest, remember this is the World Boxing Super Series final. Will they change the ring cover? Um, I wonder. I wonder if in between or after Chisora versus Price, they change the ring cover to that black World Boxing Super Series final. I like that black. I, I do really like that. I wonder if they will change the ring cover. That has nothing to do with my prediction. I'm just giving myself more time to think. I did do the video and so I thought Progress will win this on points. Um, I don't know. That's good, right? It's good that I don't know. I'm still going progress. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I'm all Josh Taylor fans. Um, I'm a Josh Taylor fan. I am. I just think progress is going to beat him. I'm sorry. I even think that progress might get a late stoppage. Ah, don't fucking come at me. That's what I think. That's what I think. It's only my opinion. I mean, I'm not good at these predictions. I'm not. But I think Progress is going to win and get a late stoppage. I think he stops him. Why? I don't know why. I just think he does. Just think he does. 
We'll see. We'll see. I hope again. I hope Josh Taylor wins, but I think progress gets to the decision. All right, that's it. Those are my predictions. What do you guys think? Let me know. Peace.